A new storm is building. Discovery Houston recommend uh, vector transfer to the BFA. As it feeds off the surface temperature of the ocean, the higher the temperature, the more severe the cyclone will become. Small island nations have always been vulnerable to the impacts of extreme weather. But now, climate change is increasing the risk of extreme weather events such as tropical cyclones and storm surges. This increase in extreme weather is already crippling the development of many small island nations around the world. In August 2008, Hurricane Gustav generated the highest wind gusts ever recorded in Cuba. Wind speeds of more than 340 kilometers per hour were recorded before the monitoring equipment was completely destroyed. This hurricane generated waves as tall as five-story buildings and it caused some of the worst storm damage ever witnessed in Cuba. When Cyclone Evan hit Samoa in December 2012, this single event resulted in the loss of one-third of the country's entire annual economic output. In January 2014, Cyclone Ian devastated Tonga's Ha'apai Islands. This Category 5 cyclone was the strongest storm ever recorded in Tongan waters. In April 2014, intense flooding in the Solomon Islands caused more than 20 deaths and more than 50,000 people were left homeless. In April 2014, intense flooding in the Solomon Islands caused more than 20 deaths and more than 50,000 people were left homeless. Communities have suddenly lost their loved ones, uh, being robbed away from them by uh, the flood. Uh, a minute they will be standing together and the next minute that they've been taken away. And to share that same feeling with uh, uh, the citizens that have been affected in a small country like Solomon Islands is a uh, is a, uh, a real disheartening and uh, and a stressful uh, stressful uh, uh, feeling uh, uh, to me as uh, as prime minister of the country. Many people still die out of extreme events and we have a duty, it's one of our priorities, to help provide early warnings so that we can save even more lives and on top of it that we can minimize the economic impact of that. Destructions on our infrastructure as well, the bridges, the roads, um, and that has affected you know, the economy, the ability of the government to, to govern. So at that point, you know, you knew that uh, as Prime Minister of the country, uh, um, you have lost control of, uh, or that, you know, the ability to be able to govern. 
has now been uh, really affect, uh, 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 seriously affected. If we don't do this investment, next time uh, an extreme event comes, it will wipe out years of development effort. And we have seen that over and over uh, again in, in many developing countries, where you get a tropical cyclone, a hurricane, or a storm surge, whatever, and it's wiping out years of development. So better to invest in prevention, and it costs much less than to put money in rehabilitation and post-disaster action. But many island nations still lack the basic resources and equipment needed to protect their vulnerable communities from the impacts of our changing climate. Currently we only have five operational meteorological stations around and uh, in terms of uh, getting uh, weather observations around that is not adequate. We do have people that are trained in interpreting uh, weather radar images, that sort of thing. But unfortunately, uh, we don't have that equipment and uh, I guess it, it is a priority need because uh, Solomon Islands, as we know, every year we have flood. And uh, as I said, if we have a weather radar that would very much improve our uh, early warning system in terms of flooding. Managing weather data and climatic uh, uh, related uh, uh, information and data uh, is so important for, for the planning of, a com of each country. So this is where the donors need to put their support uh, and, and resources to build this capacity within the country by the technology yeah, uh, to be able to access this information more efficiently and effectively and to have it disseminated to, to our local communities. A lot of funding is channeled through climate change, uh, but the, the science part of the, the, the climate change, for example, detection of what, what, is, you know, what are the changes to the climate, you need observations. And in order to have observations, you need to have equipment. While many small island nations desperately need better forecasting technology, getting the right weather and climate data is only part of the solution. Thousands of kilometers from the Solomon Islands, the small island nation of Cuba is located right in the middle of the Caribbean's Hurricane Alley. Cuba has long been exposed to the threat of extreme weather, but today it has one of the lowest death rates amongst all countries exposed to a high risk of hurricanes. Although Hurricane Gustav destroyed more than 30,000 homes, no lives were lost. Cuba has developed a unique approach for dealing with hurricanes that could provide critical lessons for other small island nations. This poor and politically isolated country has a good network of local weather stations. It also has an advanced warning system that can issue hurricane warnings up to 120 hours before a storm will strike land. The state media is also dedicated to keeping everyone informed of potential dangers. Dr. Jose Rubiera, Cuba's top weather forecaster, has been presenting the weather on national TV since 1991. And the Cuban people have learned to trust Dr. Rubiera when he announces the threat of an approaching hurricane. But Dr. Rubiera says the key to Cuba's success lies in how this information is used to make critical decisions at both the national and community levels. Decisions are made top to bottom and bottom to top. So everybody, everybody is working on the same direction, coordinated. So everybody knows what to do at the national level, at the provincial level, at the municipal level, and even in the neighborhood. Although Cuba is economically very poor, it has designed a fully integrated approach that makes the very most of its existing resources. 
Before hurricanes strike, 80% of people who are evacuated from high-risk areas go to stay with families or neighbors who have stronger homes in safer areas. This way, the evacuation shelters are only used by people who need them most. The Cuban government has also made key planning decisions based on lessons from previous hurricane events. The electricity is cut when the winds get to 90 kilometers per hour. Why? Because at that speed of winds, usually the electricity poles fell down. And if those lines are hot, people can get, can get electrocuted by that. So to prevent electrocution, accidentally electrocution in that case, electricity is cut. For Dr. Rubiera, the creation of a truly integrated approach for dealing with hurricanes has only been achieved because of political will. Political will means not only the forecast uh, office, not only the civil defense, it is not only uh, lessons in the school curricula, it is not only the awareness campaign, it is everything. And it is the, the action when before the storms, when in the storm, and also after the storm. All these actions are deeply rooted into uh, the, the Cuba culture. In some other islands, and sometimes it's not the lack of will to do it, it's just because of the, uh, uh, the size of the island. You know, Cuba is much bigger than some of the very small islands in the Pacific, which do not have the critical mass to deal with that. So here, the key word is cooperation, that they should not do it alone, but they should do it in cooperation with other similar islands. And this is one of our duties, one of our job, to try to encourage, to support this sub-regional or regional cooperation. A critical issue for all small island nations is how to provide important weather and climate information in a way that will enable both communities and governments to make better decisions. Today, the modeling power of supercomputers combined with more sophisticated observation technology has led to a growing confidence in climate predictions. New climate services can now help governments to make more informed decisions that can help to improve food security and protect public health. In the Pacific, Samoa has led the way by making greater investment in its National Meteorological Service in order to address the increasing impacts of climate change. Countries such as the Solomon Islands are also providing great leadership for other small island nations by using climate data to try and address the increasing risks from malaria and dengue. The challenge now is to ensure that all small island nations have access to the crucial services they need to protect their vulnerable communities from the impacts of extreme weather and the changing climate. It's not always easy to use by the final user, by the farmers, by the fishermen, and indeed even by governments. So the idea is to transform this information, to package it in a way which can be used by decision makers, from governments to, uh, to the fishermen. And this is one of the top priority of the organization, to develop these climate services which can be used by all decision makers. If we want to protect small island nations from the increasing impacts of extreme weather, then both leaders and donors must make it an urgent priority to invest in stronger weather and climate services. But the global community also needs to do much, much more than help small island nations to prepare for the inevitable increase in extreme weather. If industrialized countries do not make a stronger commitment to reduce carbon emissions, then the impacts of extreme weather may simply become too great for many of the world's small island nations. The more we wait, the more difficult it will be, and therefore the more expensive it will be. And if we don't manage that, the more expensive it will be for uh, countries to adapt to climate change. And as you know, small countries, and in particular small island developing states, uh, do not have a uh, huge capacity, a huge financial, technological capacity. So we are going to leave them a situation which is extremely uh, difficult to, to manage. It's urgent to act, otherwise it will not be manageable.